We are now ready to draw or paint a lemon. So let's start out with a contour line. <clears throat> and as we do the contour line, I want you to be aware of the shadows. Now I'm showing you the picture of the lemon right now on the corner. So I'll keep that there for us. But I want you to be really aware of the shadows. So I'm going to start with kind of a frame for myself. And the purpose of this is so that I stay in the camera viewfinder. But you, if you notice in a minute, I'll scroll, I'll, I'm going to zoom out. Let me zoom out a little bit. You can see I've got a lot of paper left over here. So I can do other things in that space as well. So let's zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. So let's go ahead and start with the lemon. And the shadows on the lemon are really nice here. I've got um, some cast shadows that are really nicely shown um, in the photograph that I'm putting up. So remember we're drawing and being aware that the cast shadow and the shadows on the actual lemon. So let's start and I'm going to make it big. This is, you see how big this is, it's about as big as a pencil. So that you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to start just the contour and think back to your beginning drawing classes you should be looking at the lemon more than you're looking at your paper so and I'm kind of practicing that not picking up my pencil just to stay focused but I am glancing at the paper to make sure I'm turning corners and no mistake, I'm just going to reinstate it. Um, so now I'm going to look at some shadow areas. So I've got some shadow here, and it comes up and really over and down. And my lightest area is right in here. Okay. Sorry, my dog's barking. <laughs> And I'm going to look at my darkest shadow that comes around. And then I've got kind of almost another shadow, a double shadow, because I have two light sources behind me is a big window or door, and then above me is a light. So that's what's making these two different cast shadows. I've got the drawing done, we're ready to go. Um, I've kind of broken down my cast shadows. And so um, let's talk a little bit. You need a pencil about what you need. You need a paper towel, I wrote on it. <laughs> um, and you need your, I'm just using some Crayolas. Um, you just need your regular watercolors. And you need a brush. I'm using a brush that is a number 12 so that's a good size brush you don't need anything too much smaller so before you start the first thing you're going to do like we've always done is get a little bit of water inside your trays so i just dip my brush in the water and you don't need a lot you don't want um you don't want to dig in there you just need a little drip can you see just a little drip in there if you get too much water you're um going to have some problems with a lot of different things. So just don't put too much water. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with obviously yellow, which is called a local color. And so can you see, no, you can't. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see my palette. Nope, still can't see the palette. I'll hold it up. So I'm just dipping in here and putting a little bit of yellow in. Um, and I'm not even going to really do too much more than that right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Remember those exercises that we did? I'm going to start by moving that brush around. I'm not necessarily outlining it. I want you to kind of be aware of that. I'm painting it. And these pencil contours, don't worry about those. Okay. 
So there's my basic color. Now it's a little it's darker around here. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of a warm color. So just a little bit of orange right now coming around. It's wet and it's going to drip and you're not going to worry about it. It's okay. So, and if you don't notice mine's vertical and it's still not dripping because I have just the right amount of water in there. I'm not um, digging. I'm not, um, it's not, there's no puddles or anything. It's, it, you have to really be careful with how much water. I'm going to also add some orange in here. If you have too much water, it's your paint's going to dry really light and faded anyhow. So now I've kind of got my medium area. And while that's still wet, I'm going to go into it with a little bit of red. And just to keep it not so bright, I'm going to add a touch of green. See how that darkened it into a nice darker value? So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And it's almost brown up here. Moving it around. And it will bleed into this a little bit, which is fine. Um, now I want to kind of look, talk a little bit about the shadows. I always go with a cool color for shadows, so I just did like a blue violet. <clears throat> and this is going to bleed together. And remember those little spheres that we talked about? That's okay if it bleeds together a little bit. See, it connects it. And in a little bit, we're going to go back in and... Um, add like a really deep shadow right underneath. So there's my second shadow and they bleed together a little bit and it's not, if it drips, it's not a big deal either. You'll probably be working flat on your table. So you don't really need to worry too much about drips. I'm gonna add a little more yellow in here, but really I want this to be fairly immediate. And um, you put the color down wet on wet and that, wet on wet makes it bleed a little bit like that which is fine and even this is bleeding into the um the the, the yellow is bleeding into the shadow so now i'm going to come back in and if you look there's a really dark shadow right underneath and i'm just using purple and it comes out flat and i also am going to use a little bit of that cooler color for just a little bit of this in here for those deeper um, values, that little stem or nubby. And then I'm gonna put a little green. Now the green right out of the Crayola is kind of really super bright, okay? But you do see a little green on the, the stem of it. And if you add yellow, it stays bright. So I wanna tone it down. I'm gonna tone it down with the opposite color, which is um, an orange color or a red. So I'm just gonna pull a little bit of this that I use and see that green, how it softened that green. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but that's a nice way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of green here because lemons a lot of times have some green in them. Just a little bit. And there. Now, I paint it, I let it go. You can't overwork it. So I also I'm gonna look at a highlight and I have the very lightest areas. And all you do is dab. Okay. I want this to stay fresh. I don't want it to get muddy. I don't want it to be overworked. Once you paint an area, leave it. Now you can go back in later if you want and do more to this. Um, and what I always like to do is take a, I'm, and I'm just mixing up a little bit of a violet and it's going to be fairly light. And I'd kind of like to give it a little bit of a background. So I'm dealing with this whole space. My brush is not a very good brush. So it's scumbling up. I'm dealing with that whole space. And it's very faded. And there's an artist that I really love. His name's Charles Reed. And if it's too neat, he'll just splash paint right on it. <laughs> He's just kind of crazy with his paint. But he likes, a, he likes that real loose feel. Okay, so you're gonna um, use my picture of a lemon and try to um, paint it. Or you can find your own lemon if you have your own lemon. That's even better. In a little while, we're gonna do an apple and then we're gonna do a lemon and an apple. Or maybe two apples and a lemon. I don't know, we'll see. So give this a try. Um, don't overwork it, keep it fresh, um, and don't get it too wet, but wet enough that you can get this done all in one sitting that you don't have to keep wetting it.